Hello folks, I'm Odin Spack, and welcome back to a Let's Play of my very first Let's Play I ever did. This is a replay. This is The Adventures of Rad Gravity on the Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES. Let's get started. So, here we go. We got Rad Gravity ship. We got Kakos, our ship's computer, talking to us, saying hello. We only have a teleport location for Planet Siberia, our first level. Um, and the planet there has more teleport locations, so we're going to be able to explore more of this galaxy as we progress the game here. So, we're going to disable the security, go to every computer, and we need those to continue our quest. So, this game, all of the story, this is a classic Nintendo game where, like, 95% of the game's story lies in the instruction manual. So, what are some things you need to know going into Rad Gravity, if you care about the story at all? Well, uh, our ship's computer is one of four CompuMines um, that were deactivated by the game's antagonist, Agathos. Um, so we're trying to discover where the other three were deactivated and hidden um, with the aid of the fourth CompuMine, Kakos, who is our ship's computer. So there you go. There's the entire story of Rad Gravity. Uh, there is more to it. It's actually pretty fun. The instruction manual... Uh, is laid out in a comic book style. So like the first half of the instruction manual, maybe even more than half of it, is a comic book. So it's not just like a little like story on like, wow, this guy is just not dying here, is he? Uh, it's not even just like a little story in text. Like it's laid out like a comic. It's, it's pretty neat. Uh, and I actually, for the first time, got to read through it. Uh, thanks to a good pal of mine, uh, Pixel Plume, who actually, for my birthday, um, got it for me. I think it was supposed to be for my birthday. <laughs> All I know is that I moved to America and he sent it in the mail. Um, if it wasn't for my birthday, then it was maybe it was to celebrate that, but I think it was for my birthday. I haven't really explained anything besides just playing through the game right now because honestly, this, this game is a relatively simple platformer as far as like what you do. You kind of just move forward, defeat enemies, uh, and and find stuff. It, it's <laughs> it's Metroidvania light in that like you don't really backtrack for stuff, uh, but there are items to find uh, in the game uh, that you don't have to. Most of which are just like energy and whatnot. But there's a few upgrades in the game. But another thing that's cool about this game is it's very uh, puzzle heavy in that you have to figure out how to do a lot of things. Like these big robots, for instance, uh, their bullets can like destroy other enemies like it's really cool Brad Gravity's just always been like one of my favorite games just for its weird quirkiness uh, and like stuff like that is where it really shines it's a very late NES title it came out in 1990 um, so the developers you know like they knew the hardware a little bit more than like when games were coming out for the NES back in the day um, so that, that really uh, shines through with this game. It's not, like, perfect by any means. There's definitely some, like, super crazy glitches in it and whatnot. But, like, as far as game design, like, it's there. Um, I haven't really even showed, like, we're using our sword right now. I think it's just called the laser sword. Um, we also just got the power pistol, which is the, the gun. Um, and it just straight out outclasses the sword immediately. We get it in the first level. Uh, and it's just better for like 99% of the game. There's very little instances where you really even bother with using the sword. It's kind of just, you know, sometimes fun to use. But, you know, we got the gun. We got the classic NES weapon. A lot of NES games got guns in them. A lot of platformers have guns, and Rad Gravity's no different. So, uh, we are also into the second half of this level. Siberia being the first level is actually a little strange uh, in that it has like a checkpoint. Uh, and I think that kind of goes in with the lore of the game in that it has like a bunch of computers here. A lot of the a lot of the areas in this game aren't like sci-fi heavy. They're very like like old like not they don't have technology basically. But it's funny because this level is definitely like the easiest in the game, and is the one that does not require a checkpoint by any means. <laughs> but guess what? It has one. So anyway, um, we're gonna fool everybody here on Siberia. They think we're the uh, technician here. I don't know. I guess they just saw a human come by and be like, okay, you must be the guy here sent to repair the computer. So uh, another another cool aspect of this game is just like 
all the different locales, like, everything is just different. Like, every planet will have a different enemy set, just a different environment. I mean, as it should, right? But I just think that's just one uh, thing that just really makes this game shine. Uh, as a first playthrough, anyway. Alright, and right now we're disabling the security system by destroying these little gem things here. So now we've gone through the computer, disabled security, um, and now there's going to be a notification saying, Oh, the security is off! The computers ahead are not guarded! Which is perfect for us, because as Kakos mentioned at the beginning, we need to access those computers to uh, progress in our quest. <laughs> so... Uh, I'm also going to be doing this Let's Replay in a very classic, old-school YouTube way in that we're going to be aiming for the under 11-minute marker no matter where we leave off. <laughs> so if we're in the middle of a stage, whatever. <laughs> we're just going to stop. So uh, hopefully I have this timed correctly, and if not, well, it'll be okay. Uh, but right now, uh, we're getting access to three new planets in the game. Uh, that we'll be going to later, and right now we're going to get a notice that an illegal ship has been towed to uh, Effluvia, which is actually going to be our next planet, and it's, guess what? It was our ship that was towed, and guess what? They've taken Kakos away, uh, and they're going to convert him into an evil robot, so we got to find him and pick him up and bring him back here before they convert him. And this is <laughs> this is pretty much like the only other story in this game. <laughs> There's a lot of non-story after this, so we gotta rec rescue Kakos here uh, as these guys here uh, escape into their evil ice cream truck. Uh, so we're gonna go rescue them. Uh, now this is like the junk planet here, so there's all a bunch of this is where the trash of the galaxy goes, I suppose. Uh, these guys here they'll latch onto your heads, and you gotta like bonk them off the ceiling to get rid of them. We're gonna see if we can show that off here real fast. Well, okay, that happened within like a frame. So, you didn't really get to see that. Alright, well anyway, there was a uh, hidden extra life in that uh, little <laughs> fire there, so we just jump right into the fire. What's really funny is, I was reading the instruction manual. Oh man, I barely made that jump. And it definitely says at, in one of the pages, like, Hey, sometimes, like, for this planet, it has, like, it has hints for every planet. And for this planet, it's like, hey, sometimes jump into the fire. You might find something good. <laughs> it's like, it's just for that. Like, what a weird hint. Like, <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, we went into a secret area. There is a lot of these that I don't know how I ever found these as a kid. Uh, some of which I didn't, and we'll show those off later. But in here is the elusive super sword, which... Again, did, did I tell you how useless the sword is? Uh, we're really just getting it to show you where it is. I'm barely going to use the sword in this game. So anyway, we're in this like little like trash compactor area here. Or I guess this is where they convert stuff into evil robots. And there's Kakos. If we let him get in there, we'd get the bad ending. No, we wouldn't, but he would get turned into a robot. So We stopped it. We grabbed him. We can leave. We're gone. Let's get out of here. No big deal. And actually, we don't have a teleport location to Effluvia, so we actually can't go back. Uh, we have to get our ship towed again if we wanted to go back there. Uh, I don't really want to get towed again, so we're going to get back. Uh, we have the location for Volcania, but we can't go there yet. I mean, we can, but there's nothing we can do there yet. Uh, so we're not going to bother. And coming up is one of our split decisions of the game. We can either go to Turvia or Soria. Uh, we're going to go to Soria first. Technically, we don't ever have to come here, but uh, again, I'm going to show off stuff from the game, so why the heck not? We're going to go to Soria. As you can probably guess by the uh, title of the uh, level, uh, it's Dinosaur. <laughs> so this is like the uh, uh, dinosaur planet. So you got those uh, dinosaurs there. You got these uh, fire ants here. Um, and uh, this level is about 90% 90, 90 not this. <laughs> there, I mean, I guess there's like a little maze section and there's like dinosaurs here. We're going to get messed up by this dinosaur. We should be fine now, although he really hurt me, so I got I to gotta be careful here. Actually, you know what? Here's, let's use a sword. There we go. Oh, okay. Well, that was bad. We are actually, we're actually running out of time. 
So, how silly is that? But I'm actually really hurting, but there's not a whole lot of things that are going to do damage to me left in this level. Uh, we just started it, I know, but... Um, oh man, I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't ready for that one there. Alright, get rid of that guy there. Okay, most of this level is this maze part. Um, and actually, we're going to tackle this next time. So, thank you so much for watching part one of my Let's Replay of The Adventures of Rad Gravity. I'll see you next time where we solve the maze of Soria. So until then, take care, and goodbye.